All right, let's do this quickly in two parts. Uh, on the silver side, uh, Mark, whatever I think about the case, um, and I happen to think that it's an indictment on Albany, um, where does he have more trouble, Silver? On the real estate the real case estate or on the, stronger case. the medical the, stuff? The, the, real, the medical stuff is flimsy on a number of grounds. Um, without getting too technical, uh, the property that he supposedly extorted might not be property, and the judge uh, acknowledged that in her opinion before trial, and that's undoubtedly mm -hmm. one of the things that they're arguing about right now. Uh, I think the, uh, the uh, mesothelioma part of the case is very weak. Uh, if anything's going to stick, it's going to be the real estate mm. charges. Those are bad because they were directly getting kickbacks for matters that they had an interest uh, before it, him, and I think he's in trouble on those. For me, I'm trying to get my head around it. Uh, I was asking you in the break, 12 people in a box are going to figure this one out here. I think most people, if you ask them, does this feel and seem scummy, most people are going to say overwhelmingly yes. But I guess it depends on the jury instructions that the judge gives, and it depends on the 12 people. You've seen enough juries. What's your gut? It depends on the 12 people. It's going to depend on even things as simple as do they like the prosecutor, do you like the defense attorney. And unfortunately, it's going to depend on lots of things that are wholly outside <laughs> of the evidence itself. So quite often, uh, <laughs> the entire instruction that you have to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt goes out the window. Uh, hopefully, they hold the prosecutor to the burden. If the prosecutor meets that burden, then you should convict. Mm. But if not, and that's not a whim, it's not you filling in the blanks, you're not adding extra DNA to the case, uh, it's difficult. It ultimately comes down to do you like these people. Yep. Can I just add one thing that I just sort of thought of? Don't discount uh, the Paris factor on this. If this is a close case, and they spent months and months and months investigating it, pouring into, pouring money into this, and it's really a, a kind of a flimsy case. People might be upset at that expenditure of prosecutorial resources and say, "Why are you, why are you doing this when there's there's so many bigger things to worry hmm. about? Is this some kind of personal vendetta?" Interesting. Uh, on the Skelos side, Doug, um, what does it tell you that apparently one on the Skelos side, we don't know if it's father and son. I think the guess is it's son. Went to the feds and offered to um, take a plea deal here and was refused. Listen, I, I mean, I don't think you could look into that in any way, shape, or form. Anybody that's facing this type of time wants to find out what their options are and whether, you know, whether they had a conversation and it was unrealistic. You can't really read anything into that. There's a lot of exposure here. Mm. And same question I'll ask both of you, Doug. Um, they got wiretaps and apparently they're really unflattering to both of the Skelloses. We already knew about some of them. He's like, oh, Preet Bahar is probably listening to the calls, proving they're not rocket scientists. Even if it's not criminal what they say on it, <laughs> if it's so offensive, some of the things they say, is that almost as bad when it comes to a jury sitting there and listening to it? Because that's stuff that everybody's compelling to listen to. It's not document after document. I mean, that's the riveting stuff that will stay with you when you deliberate, right? Rich, it's a huge problem. If, if if friends knew what other friends said about them when they when they weren't there, <laughs> they would be. What a, are you telling a, me? <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine I'll tell you, right here. Some, you know people behaving badly. It's very hard to get that out of your head. He's in trouble here. Isn't he, he? He's in a lot of trouble. The burner phones. But the, but the other side of it, the other uh, two quick things. The other side of it is <laughs> you listen to the things that the son said, and you know I, you need things that Dean Skello said because the son's behavior is that of a spoiled kid. He's just and, talking and tough. He was just talking tough, and, and you can't convict the father f because of his son's lunacy. But I have to go back to something you and I were talking about before, Mayo. These are smart people, and look at what they're saying on the phone. And that's all so the more reason why we don't I, need encryption. I get, I, I get it, <laughs> but, you know, these people that we want to find out what they're up to, you know, the notion that they're so smart that they're not going to talk on the phone, that they're not going to slip up, that they're not going to give a clue as to the next mm -hmm. bomb that's going to go off, you know, I, Problem I, 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 I got to let him know so the last word on that one. I'm with you. Because we got to talk birth control, a subject all five of us know so much about here. Mm -hmm. um, coming up next, is a drug maker responsible for bad birth control pills when more than 100 women say yes and they want the drug company to pay from infancy right through college? We'll see what the panel has to say. Stay with us. <laughs>